Ashley here with hearthookhome.com and today we are going to work up the tiny size, the three to six month size of the Shanty sweater. The Shanty sweater features the herringbone double crochet, which is a lot easier to crochet than you might think. Um, for this pattern, we are continuously working in the round for the yoke. So we will start with the circle and we will grow that circle and then we will fold it in half to create armholes and continue crocheting down to make the body of the cardigan. For materials today, I am using a four millimeter G crochet hook. This is what hook I need to obtain the gauge as listed in the pattern, which is 14 stitches wide in four inches and 10 rows tall in four inches. So make sure that you are able to meet your gauge. It's particularly important, especially with wearables. For yarn, I'm just using something that I had in my stash. This is Joy DK. It's a lightweight size three baby weight yarn in the Loops and Threads brands from Michaels. The smallest size takes only about 225 yards. So I will have plenty in one ball of this yarn, which is pretty awesome, right? To make a whole sweater out of one ball of yarn. So definitely make sure you have your gauge swatch ready. Make sure that you have your pattern ready, whether you're making the smallest size or any child size or the adult size. The adult pattern is very, very similar to what we are doing here. So if you have any questions whatsoever with that design, with the Shanty sweater, definitely continue watching and we're about to work one up together. So, <clears throat> Here I have the size three to six month. I've already done my initial chain. This chain is what will be the neck opening, okay? So I wanna make sure that my chain here, all of my stitches are not twisted, that they are all nice and straight and not in, um, you know, twisted around on each other so that when I go to work back through it, everything works out as it should. So I've got my left hand here. I'm gonna flip it so that I can uh, insert my hook into that first chain. So I'm gonna insert my hook here and I'm going to do a slip stitch to close the circle. And so then this, once I finish this slip stitch here, now we have what will be the neck opening for the three to six month size. Now that we have our neck opening, we are ready to go ahead and start with the actual yoke of our sweater. So everyone here is going to have different stitch counts. Every size is different. So make sure you follow along with the actual pattern that you're making and not what I'm doing here unless you are doing the three to six month size as well. So everyone at this point is supposed to chain two. And now we're going to start doing our herringbone double crochets around our entire chain. Your first stitch is always going to be in the same as the join. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to do my herringbone double crochet. I will say it helps me if I pinch this with my thumb here and you'll get the hang of it as you go along. If you need a full tutorial for the herringbone double crochet, that is available on hearthookhome.com and also on my YouTube channel. So I am doing the three to six month size, of course. So I am following row one of my pattern, which says that I need to have nine of these herringbone double crochets, and then I'm going to do an increase. So I'm going to go to nine and then we'll, we'll increase together. This is my ninth stitch so far. So I've completed now my ninth stitch. Okay, looking pretty, right? I love this stitch, it's so pretty. Now in the next stitch, I'm going to place two herringbone double crochets. That is my increase. So all you're doing is you're literally placing two of these in the same stitch. Right in that same stitch right there. All right, now I'm going to herringbone double crochet in the next nine stitches. The chain can be a little bit difficult to work in, especially after you do the two in one. So just kind of Wiggle your hook in there and you'll get it. That's nine, so I'm gonna place two in this one. This is the 10th, right? So we do our nine and then two in the next. Remember to follow the pattern that you are making and not exactly what I'm doing here unless you're making the same size as me. So I did two in that stitch together right here so now I'm ready to do my nine again, and then I'll do two when I get to the 10th. And I'm gonna do this all the way around the entire P. 
piece until I get back to where I started. So here I have made it all the way around. I've placed my two herringbone double crochets in my last stitch and now I'm ready to join to the first stitch. These two here are my chain, so I need to actually join to the top of the first actual stitch, which is this guy right here. So I'm going to slip stitch that shut with a join, right? Or join it with a slip stitch. And now let's take a look at our cute little opening. Oh my gosh, isn't it normal? <laughs> so basically we've got a circle. Everyone right now should have a circle. We are All we're going to do is continue growing this circle until I tell you to stop for the size that you're making, okay? So I'm ready to start round two. So um, at the beginning of every round during the yoke, you're going to chain two. Now follow the size that you are making. I know I'm going to say that about a million times, but you need to make sure you're following your size. So now I'm going to herringbone double crochet in the next five stitches. And remember, I'm doing this because I want my increases where we placed the two here, I want them to be staggered every row. I never want to have two of my increases right next to each other because it helps to hide where you did your increasing, right? So I'm going to do my herringbone double in five stitches. So now that I've got those five in, I'm going to place two herringbone double crochets in the next stitch. So in this one right here, I'm going to do my two here. Now I'm going to herringbone double crochet in the next 10 stitches and then do two in the 11th. There are 10 stitches there, so now I'm going to place two in the next. And this is all we're doing for the entire yoke of the pattern, which is everything up until we separate off for the armholes. So as long as you can count, um, and make sure you count, um, and you can make these herringbone double crochets. Just keep going and following the stitch counts for the size that you're making. I'm going to continue all the way until I get to the end of this row, and we will hook back up. Okay. I am at the end of row two here, and since we're offsetting our increases, our last increase of row two is not going to be at the end over here because that would be staggering. So I've gone my last increase here, and now I'm going to do my herringbone double crochet in the remaining stitches. And that should line up for the pattern that you're making. I should have five stitches left here, and I do, so everything is working out nicely. join to the top of that first actual stitch and now we're ready to start row three so i'm going to chain two i'm going to place my first herringbone double right in that very first stitch and now i'm going to do actually round three says i'm going to do two in the first so follow your pattern for the size that you're making now i'm going to herringbone double crochet in 11 stitches and then increase in the 12th. There's my increase. I'm going to go for 11 more. And that's number 11, so I'm going to do my increase here, so two in this same stitch. And I'm going to do 11 more. That's number 11. I'm going to do two in this one. 11 more. Two in the next. And I lost count here, so I'm going to find the last time I had two, which is right here, and I'm going to make sure that I've got 11 there. So this is my 12th, so that's 11, 12, I'm going to do two in this one. And then my pattern says that I am supposed to go all the way to the end of this. So I should have 11 left here. Two and 11 perfect and then i'm going to join to the top of my first actual stitch which is this one right here we're going to join and we're ready to start round four so this is literally all it is at this point you should have a circle that looks something like this right probably a lot larger if you're making the adult size, but you get the gist. We're just going to keep building this and building this and building this until we until the pattern tells you to stop. All right, here I have completed my nine rows of the yoke for the three to six month size. 
Now, this is how yours should look as well, no matter what size you're making. Um, you should all have a circle in the middle, followed by as many rows as specified for the pattern size you're making, and then it will end up looking like a very nice, large, flat circle. So what we're going to do next is the armholes. And basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to fold this in half, right? So that this is now um, our neck opening, and then this will be our body. So what you're going to do is follow your size that you are making, of course, I know I say that like a million times, but for the smallest sizes, the plus sizes, you are going to do a chain here uh, to add a little bit width under the arm. For the smaller sizes and the small adult sizes, you do not do a chain. So where it says my armhole row, I am going to skip 24 stitches and that is going to be my armhole. So this one where we joined, that is our first one. Since we would normally place our first stitch of the row in this stitch here, that is going to be counted as number one. So I'm going to count 24 stitches and then I'm going to have herringbone double crochet um, in the next one after that. So I'm going to count out 24. Twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, 21, 22, 23, and this is 24. So I'm going to place my herringbone double crochet in the next one, which is the 25th. So I'm gonna keep my thumb here. I'm going to do this very strategically. <laughs> I'm going to place my herringbone double crochet right in this stitch. So this is going to be my armhole here, right? So now I'm going to just continue herringbone double crochet this one might be a little bit um, on the loose side, this stitch, so just try to pull it a little bit tighter to make sure that um, this, this looks good, okay? So just make sure that you're not, this one isn't super, super loose. So now it says that I need to herringbone double crochet in the next 32 stitches, so let me do that. 31, 32. Okay, so now this is going to be the front of my cardigan. So now I'm going to chain or skip another 24 stitches and then I'm going to start herringbone double crocheting again all the way until we get to the beginning of this row. So I'm going to go ahead and do my yarn over. I'm going to count 24 and I'm going to do my 20 go into the 25th. And typically I like to count that twice because kind of like when you're sewing measure twice, cut once, kind of my theory here. So I've done my first herringbone double crochet in there and I'm going to continue until I reach the end over here and this should be 32 stitches as well to match. Not all of the sizes are equal, um, so follow the size that you are making as usual. 31 and 32, beautiful. So that is my first, or that is my armhole row, okay? Let me pull my yarn out a little bit and we are going to look at how adorable this little thing is. So these are now my armholes, right? Doesn't that look nice? Yours should essentially look exactly the same. Like I said, the larger adult sizes have a chain under here to give more width around the, um, the chest area. Um, the smaller sizes do not have any chains on, on the underneath of the arm. So now all we're going to do for the rest of the body, the entire rest for all sizes, it doesn't matter what size you're doing, you are just going to crochet from here straight down to create the body. Okay, so now for the three to six month size that I'm making, I am going to go to row 26. So the row that I just did was row 10. So I'm going to do another 16 rows just straight down and it's going to be the body of my sweater here. So I am going to get my stitch marker and while you don't have to, have to, have to have a stitch marker, I do recommend it, um, especially if you are, um, just not sure of, of where your first stitch of the row could be. Okay, so what I am going to do, I've got my, my final stitch here. I am going to go straight into this first stitch right here. So this is the one, the first stitch that I did after I skipped the armhole stitches here. So for the start, to start the next row, I'm going to go straight into that next stitch. Okay, right here. And we are just going to continue 
That's my first stitch of the next row. So I would place a stitch marker in this stitch right here if you are not confident that you can find that later on. One tip that will help you find your, your the, where this stitch goes, um, this line right here is the seam from our yoke. And so this is going to be, if we are looking at the baby, okay, this is the back of the baby and this is the baby's right shoulder. And so this is going to be the front and this is the back. So your seam over here is always going to be at the right hip. Okay, or at the right side. So now I am literally just going to crochet in a spiral, continuous spiral, without joining, without chaining, without doing anything all the way until I finish my 26 rows for the body of my sweater. So I am literally just going to continue crocheting along. When I get this body done, I will hook back up with you. When you get the body done, do not fasten off. We are going to go straight into the ribbing for the bottom ribbing of this, and then we will work on these sleeves together, and then we'll be done. This really is not very difficult. Um, it's very fun and relaxing, I think, and it comes out with a really cute sweater in the end. So you guys work on creating the body of your shanty sweater and when we get to the ribbing portion below, we will work on that together. So I'll see y'all soon. We are ready to do our ribbing and we are only doing uh, four rows of ribbing for this size. This ribbing uses front post and back post double crochet. So if you know how to do that, that is excellent. If you do not, there is a video tutorial for this as well. So the very first thing that we're going to do is that for the ribbing down here at the bottom, we wanna make sure that we have an odd number of stitches. It just looks nicer. So the first thing I'm going to do, since I have an even number here, not all sizes are even, make sure you follow the size that you are crocheting. But since um, this one is an even number, I'm going to do one decrease just in these two stitches here to make sure that I have an odd number. So I'm just going to do a half double crochet two together. doesn't have to be fancy. I just need one decrease so that I can get this out of the way. Okay, so now our first stitch, or our first stitch of ribbing, is going to be a front post double crochet around this stitch right here. So front post double crochet. I'm going to go around that whole post. And then the next one, I'm gonna do a back post. So come from the back side, double crochet, and a front, and a back. And we're just gonna alternate these the whole entire way around. When we get all the way around, we're going to place our last front post around that half double crochet, and we're going to join to the top of the first actual stitch. It looks a little funky while you're doing it right here, but I promise you it will look fine when we're done. So we're joining to the top of that actual first front post double crochet. Now, we're actually going to do something that we have not been doing the whole time in that we're going to chain two and turn. We have not been turning this whole entire time, so this is the first turn of the entire sweater, okay? So, first we're going to do a back post around this one because it looks like a back post, right? And so we're wanting all of our ribbing to nicely line up. So this is a back post double crochet. We're gonna do a front one around this one. Since this one is sticking out towards us anyway, this is a front post and a back post. And a front post and a back post. And we're just gonna continue this all the way around. We are going to complete these ribbing rows for a total of four rows on this size. The number of rows you do gets larger, uh, the larger size you're making. This row, on, or this size only gets four rows of this ribbing. So this is row two of ribbing. When I get to the end of this round, I'm going to join to the top of this stitch, and then I'm going to turn and come back the other way, right? So I'm just gonna keep on adding to this ribbing. When you get to the end of your ribbing rows, this is my final ribbing row here, um, I am going to do a chain one to where I'm looking at the outside of the sweater. 
and I'm just going to do a single crochet all the way around. This is just a nice little finishing just to finish off the body. We're just going to do a single crochet in each of these stitches all the way around. When you get to the end, clip enough to where you can do an invisible join. And I will do that later. I'm just going to pull it straight on through. If you need a tutorial for the invisible join or how to make this seam look a little bit nicer, look that up on my YouTube channel or on hearthookhome.com. Okay, so let's zoom all the way back out here. We have got this adorable sweater. You can tell that this is the uh, back of the sweater because we can see our seam here, right? Flip it over and this is the front of our sweater. Isn't it adorable? Here's our ribbing that we just completed on the bottom. It's looking super cute. Now we're going to do one row of single crochet just around the opening here just to kind of tighten things up and, and give it a nice finishing edge. So I like to join my yarn at the actual seam here. So here's where our seam is. I'm just going to join my yarn close to that so that it's as inconspicuous as possible. I mean, if there's already a seam there, you might as well make your seam there too, you know, right? So I'm going to join with a slip stitch. I chained one and now I am literally just going to do a single crochet row all around the opening. Now if you have decided that you you would like your neck to be a little bit tighter, you can do, go down a hook size when you do this or and or you could do a couple of rows of this single crochet just to kind of pull it in around the neck just a little bit more if the neck is too big for you personally like if um, on the adult size or even the children's sizes you can still add another row of this single crochet so I'm going to continue adding this single crochet here and then all we have left to do are the sleeves all right I have finished with my body with the ribbing with my one row of single crochet around the opening and I went ahead and did one of the sleeves so that I could show you what it looks like done right so that we're going to crochet the second sleeve together they're short shorter sleeves they're only three quarter length so at least we've got um, the light at the end of the tunnel right so when you're looking at your sleeve opening here you want to make sure that you are attaching your hook or your yarn in the first actual stitch so see how this one has something coming out of it that's not where we're going to join we're going to go right into the first actual stitch of the armhole opening so i'm going to take my yarn here i'm going to leave a decent enough tail to where when i'm finished i can use this to sew up any holes that there will be at the bottom of the um sleeve so i'm going to go ahead and just attach my yarn here with a slip stitch I'm going to chain one and I'm going to herringbone double crochet in as many stitches as stated for the size that I'm making. For the three to six month size, I'm going to half double or herringbone double crochet in 23 stitches. So here I just pinched that yarn tail just with that first stitch. So there's my first one of the row. I'm going to go ahead and place a stitch marker because I like to keep stitch markers on my first row or my first stitch of every row of the sleeve. That's very important, especially in the sleeve part of the pattern. Not so much on the body here that we just finished crocheting, but definitely on the sleeves. So now I'm going to do herringbone double crochet in 23 stitches total. So that was number one. I've done 23 herringbone double crochets. Now I'm going to do a double crochet four together. And all we're really doing here is we're getting from where we are on this stitch here all the way over here. So it's going to be one large stitch, but it's going to make all the difference in the world. So I'm gonna pull up right here. These are just regular double crochets. I'm going to just kind of place them across the bottom of the armhole here. Just so that there's something, pull through that one too. There's one more. I'm gonna do it about right here. So just evenly place these four 
stitches across the bottom of your armhole here and it does have a little bit of a hole that is okay we are going to clean that up when we're done so we are going to join to the top of the first actual stitch right there and that is going to be our only join right make sure you read the size that you're making for this <laughs> sweater um, sleeve so it does look a little funky here. That is okay. That's why we left that long tail. We're gonna go in and we're gonna kind of clean this up here in a little bit. So go ahead and remove your stitch marker so that we can place our first stitch of row two. So we're not gonna chain or anything. I'm just gonna do a half or herringbone double crochet right in that same stitch. And I'm going to mark that with my stitch marker. And now I'm going to do a herringbone double crochet in the rest of these stitches all the way around. This is my last stitch before the stitch marker. So that is the end of row two. On row three, for this size, I'm going to put half double crochet, or half, I always say that, why do I say that? Herringbone double crochet in all of the stitches what I did there is I just placed my first stitch in the same stitch marker, so now I'm going to move my stitch marker up to mark the start of row three. Um, I'm just going to do all but the last two stitches, and then we're going to do our decrease. Okay, so I've got one more. And then after that, we've only got these two stitches left open. So we're going to do a decrease here. This is how I do them. I don't know if there's a better way. I just insert here, pull that loop up, and then go straight into the next one. And I pull that loop up as well. And then I pull through these two. And by that time, it'll look like a regular herringbone double. That's how I do mine two together. Not sure if there's a better way to do that. If you find a better way, then have at it. Perfectly fine. So now I'm going to do a herringbone double crochet in each stitch around. This one's my first stitch of the row. So when I'm done, I'm going to place my stitch marker back in there. And keep on keeping on. So this one has no decreases. I'm just going to con continue crocheting one solid round. Of stitches. Okay, so now that I am back to where I started, I'm going to take out my stitch marker and we are going to start round five. So round five wants me to do exactly what I just did in round three, so I'm going to place my first one of that row, put my stitch marker in, and I'm going to do a decrease at the last two stitches of this round. When I get to where I have two left, since this is a decrease row and I'm doing them in the last two stitches, I'm going to do my decrease right here. So now I'm ready to do round six, which is just have herringbone double crochet in each stitch around. So I'm going to take out my stitch marker so I can move it up a row. And for this size, I'm just going to do this round in solid herringbone double crochet. Now on the, the next round I have, I'm going to place my decrease in the first two stitches. So I'm going to remove my stitch marker and I'm going to place my decrease right in these two stitches here. And then I'm going to place my stitch marker in the top of that one that I just made since that is now our first stitch of the row. This is my final row of my sleeve here, and I'm going to do a decrease in these two and then just continue all the way around like I just did. And then we will be ready for our finishing round of the sleeve. Right, when you get done here with your final round, you can either, there's the option of adding the ribbing like we did to the body of the sweater, 
or you can just do a single crochet edging, which is what I'm going to do here. So I'm just gonna do straight from my last herringbone double, I'm just gonna start with single crochet and work my way all the way around the sleeve with just single crochets. And then we are finished with our cardigan, with our little sweater, and I will show you how I weave in my ends underneath the arm pit area to kind of clean up any holes that we have there. Okay, let me fasten or clip my yarn here and I'll do my invisible join here in a moment. And we are done. So in order to clean these up, see this one um, I've already done, I haven't woven in the ends yet on the inside, but it doesn't look too bad, right? It's a little bit holy, not that horrible. This one looks a little bit funkier. I'm not sure why it looks so funky, but we're gonna fix it and it's not going to look as weird as it does right now. So I'm flipping it inside out and I'm taking this tail that we used from the beginning when we attached to make our sleeve. So I'm going to weave this in and you are going to be so surprised when you see the difference that some strategic weaving in makes. See all these holes, right? We're just gonna kind of grab parts of stitches in strategic places that are going to pull these holes a little bit together, okay? Now this, I do this with every single cardigan I make. Always, always, always leave a little bit extra yarn when you attach to do your sleeves because you can go through and really clean up this whole underarm area with very little effort. Doesn't this already look so much better? And even that right there looks a heck of a lot better than it did. So I'm just going to continue weaving in my ends here. Here, I'll do that in a second since we've seen the gist of it, right? So let me lay my little beautiful little sweater down flat. And we've got this adorable little thing. Isn't it adorable? I just love it. I'm going to finish weaving in all my ends and then I'll take a, a few good pictures for y'all and share them with you. I hope you love your little shanty sweater or your large one if you're making one for yourself. So I enjoy crocheting with you. I'm going to weave in all these ends and I will catch up with you next time. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you soon.